the Hedgehog by Signal Tommy the Hedgehog was very sleepy on that fine, sunny summer morning. He had been awake all night with his friends at a party in the magical forest, drinking thimbles of pixie wine and eating tiny, tasty cakes made by the band members of the village people who were living nearby in a giant rubber toadstool. Goodness, declared Tommy as he opened his eyes and stretched. I am a very sleepy little hedgehog, and no mistake. Tommy got up and brushed his teeth and combed his prickles. And when all this was done, he was feeling more awake. My, that was a very nice party last night, he thought. I must remember to thank all my furry forest friends for coming. Before he could do that, of course, Tommy the Hedgehog needed to go to work. Tommy was a mechanic, which means he fixed the cars belonging to the little blue goblins who lived deep in the forest in the big, broad branches of the Berrywinkle trees. The leader of the little blue goblins, Mr. Periwinkle, had sent Tommy his rickety old Daimler SP250 and wanted him to drop in the engine out of a 1971 Series 3 E-Type Jaguar. So, Tommy collected his toolbox and put on his dungarees and went down to the garage to work. He went past the naughty Jub-Jubs, who were playing hooky in the undergrowth, and waved at Mrs. Owl, who sat knitting in her tree. He walked along the path of flowers and through the sunny clearing, and up past the wavy cotton tops, who ran as he was nearing, and across the field of Farmer Jones, famous for his lies and paused a while by Baker Pete's so he could smell the pies. Soon he arrived at the Blue Goblin Garage in the middle of the village and opened up his toolbox to take out and count his tools. He found his little hammer and he found his little wrench, both his little screwdrivers and the well-appointed set of ratchets that uptight Mr. Rascal had confiscated from the bad ferrets of Basingstoke. But he couldn't find his special tool the one that he had invented himself to help him fix the goblins' cars. Oh no! exclaimed Tommy, feeling a surge of panic race up his little spine. Without my special tool, I shall never be able to finish this job for Mr. Periwinkle. I must have lost it at the party last night. Old Man Badger found Tommy crying on the steps in front of the Blue Goblin Garage and said, Buck up, young hedgehog. Why are you crying so? I've lost my special tool, cried Tommy. Please help me. Tell me, have you seen it? Bless my black and white whiskers, grumbled old man Badger. Describe it for me. Well, it was about three inches long, and it had four little pointy prickles on the end, and I need it ever so much. Have you seen it? I'm sorry, young lad, came the reply. I'm, a I'm afraid I have not. Oh, why don't you ask old Tony the Hound Dog? He was at your party last night. Perhaps he can sniff it out for you. So Tommy thanked the badger and ran through the village to old Tony's place. He ran through the special melting tents of the frozen gypsy clowns and past the leaping hermits who had their ups and downs. And from alehouses and tawdry shacks and carpenters and stocks, he ran so fast he very nearly wore out his little socks. Old Tony was sitting on the rocking chair on his little deck watching the world wander by, occasionally shouting at small children to stay off his lawn. His gramophone was playing Sinatra's cover of Miley Cyrus's Can't Be Tamed, for he was a dog of the world. How can I help you, young hedgehog? He called out as Tommy ran up the path towards him. Please, sir, Tommy replied. I've, I've lost my special tool, and old man Badger says you might be able to find it for me. Well, now, young lad, my sniffer ain't what it used to be, but if you describe this special tool to me, I'll see what I can do. Well, it was uh, about three inches long. It had four little pointy prickles on the end, and I needed ever so much. C can you smell it? Old Tony lifted his grizzled snout and sniffed the air a few times. Why, save me hysterically and call me a hyena, he shouted. I do believe I can smell your tool from here. Oh, oh, where, where, squeaked Tommy. Head north into the forest and speak to Mr. Beaver. I'm sure he could tell you more. Oh, thank you, thank you, old Tony. 
Tommy shouted as he scarpered down the road. He ran past the jumbled jubbaby and past the froggy pond and through the fields of foxgloves of which he was quite fond. He broke the laws of space and time to get through Black Meg's void, something which I venture has left her quite annoyed. Eventually, he came to the beaver dam and waited until Mr. Beaver swam out to him. Hello, young Tommy Hedgehog, said Mr. Beaver around the bit of wood he was chewing. What, what can I do for you this fine morrow? Please, sir. I've lost my special tool. Old Tony the Hound Dog says you might be able to help. Mmm. Uh, well now, said Mr. Beaver, everything lost in the forest ends up at the base of my dam eventually. Perhaps I could have a bit of a rubbish down there for you. Mm, what does this special tool of yours look like? Well, it was about three inches long, had four little pointy prickles on the end. I, I need it ever so much. Oh, please, can you look for it? So Mr. Beaver dove back in the water, fossicked around the detritus at the bottom of the dam, he found many tools, both large and small. He found broken bottles discarded by the nested Jeremies, whom he had chased away on the day before, and the comb from Wattle the Crested Gibbon, who had recently moved to Prague to star in his own sitcom. But he could not find a tool such as that described by Tommy. Mm, I'm sorry, Tommy, he said eventually as he rose to the surface. There's nothing at the base of my dam like your tool, mm, but now you mention it, I do recall seeing Barry the Jaguar skulking past here with something similar. You might be able to find him in his tree. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Beaver, cried Tommy, so excited that he would have hugged the rodent had he not been so moist or smelled so much of fish, and scrambled up the river bank and back into the forest. He gambled through the lily fields where fungal ponies played, and through the vale of froggy ponds where the donkey toads all brayed and past the mighty shattered oaks, the loomis and the croon, and bit the shaggy shudder elf, because it was nearly noon. Soon, he arrived at the jaguar tree, its leaves all shiny and green and black, with mossy bark baked by the claws of the giant predatory cat. Mr. Jaguar, Tommy called, with some apprehension, his voice faltering a little as he spoke. Why do you disturb my slumber? A nearby shadow replied in a deep and rumbly voice as Barry the Jaguar sidled from the foliage. Oh, oh, please, Mr. Jaguar, Tommy cried and wrung his hands in worry. I do so hope you can help me. You see, I've lost my special tool. Mr. Beaver said you might have seen it. Barry the Jaguar scratched his chin with a single yellow talon. Well, now, he rasped. Perhaps you had better describe this tool to me. Well, it was about three inches long, had four little points on the end. I need it ever so much. Oh, please, do you know where it is? Ah, oh, rumbled Barry, and he wagged his tail in the way that cats do, which lets you know they're about to get very angry. I have seen it. In fact, I had it only a few moments ago. Tommy the Hedgehog squeaked with joy. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Jaguar. Please tell me where it is. Certainly came the reply, followed by a toothy grin. I'm afraid that I have eaten it. <gasps> this made Tommy stop and stare, not knowing what to say. Eventually he found the strength to ask, What? What? You've eaten it? Why did you eat it? That's easy, replied Barry. I'm a four-point tool-eater jaguar. The End